CCL Sports Cards fans, welcome back. I'm your host, Christopher Davies. Today, I'm going to talk about something that I really feel needs addressing in the world of buying graded cards. And in explaining it, just may save you hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars. But before I do, I have a favor to ask. We are getting closer and closer to my goal of 500 subscribers. So if you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content, help me get a little closer and hit that subscribe icon. And with that ask, let's get on with the show. If you're a newer collector of the hobby, you may be blissfully unaware that for about 20 years, as a rule, a BGS 9.5 was roughly equal to a PSA 10. And while SGC is very well known as a grader and has been around for just as long as the aforementioned big dogs, which does offer SGC a lot of credibility, at least in my opinion, its gem ratings have never been equal to a PSA or a BGS gem mint rating when talking resale. I do, however, love the tuxedo style of their slabs, but this episode is not about preference. While that's relevant, especially if you're a collector, this episode is meant to educate you and again, maybe, just maybe, save you a few bucks. But let's back up. Grading has been around for over 30 years, at least as it refers to PSA. And their appearance in the sports card market came in 1991, roughly the same time that the card market's last bull cycle, or, or hotter market, if you will, was starting to cool off and end. And they were very unknown to me at that time. BGS was a later entrant to the hobby and began grading cards around 1999. In fact, I remember attending this Toronto Sports Card Expo, which for as long as I can remember is held every six months. So this is the year 2000. And my mom's then husband-to-be is looking over some cards I had brought to trade or to sell in the likes of Joe Thornton's Upper Deck Rookie and Patrick Marlowe Rookie cards, both from the same set, and a stack of 1992 Paul Correa's. He looks at me and he asked, why aren't these cards graded? Which, until that point, was virtually unknown to me. He explained what grading was and that PSA was very reputable and a good option. But Beckett, as a company you had to be on another planet to not be aware of, especially if you were a collector, was also grading cards and would be at the show. He gave me a brief rundown of, of the grading scale and said that generally speaking, a BGS 9.5 Gem Mint card was roughly equal to a PSA 10, also Gem Mint, in terms of value. And as it happens, I never sold those cards or traded them and eventually wound up grading them all years later. But after seeing slab cards at the show and the premium that came with that, that day, collecting was changed for me forever. My mom's fiance was right. Whether buying cards on eBay or at the show that day, a BGS 9.5 was very much equal to a PSA 10 in terms of cost or perceived value. And that makes sense. Both are very reputable and the market supported this theory time and time again. This continued for about 20 years and something you could sort of set your watch to. Then, around 2019, it all changed. Someone decided that a PSA 10 was more valuable than a BGS 9.5. How it all came to be is really, it's still confusing. But for the last two to three years, this is a fact. Now, when a card graded by BGS is a 9.5, but what is referred to as True Gem Plus, meaning it has three subgrades of 9.5 and a 10, the card commands a premium because the thinking goes that it, it will in all likelihood cross to a PSA 10 fairly easily. And the reason a base gem BGS 9.5, meaning it only has three 9.5s and a 9, is less likely to cross and is marginally more valuable than a PSA 9. While all of the above is understandable to a certain extent, it's really quite foolish when you think about it. Now, I will say that I prefer PSA 10s at this point in time, but that is mainly because collectors and investors pay a premium, and I'm not going to fight that. If anything, I, I feel a BGS slab should be more valuable as they're far more transparent. If you pay for the subgrades, they'll tell you on the slab why your card is awesome. Or conversely, why it sucks. I think it sucks even more if your card gets a 9 with PSA 
that you may think was a 10, but then are given no real reason why your car didn't gem. I think transparency is valuable, which is why FCG, CSG, and even HGA are valuable as graders. They also tell you why your car graded how it did and are far less expensive than the big boys, sometimes as low as $20 per card. And if you aren't concerned with resale, you can be comforted by the fact that in all likelihood, you have a very nicely graded copy of the card you wanted and for far less money. Again, unfortunately, the high premium resale just isn't theirs for those companies yet, but they still have value because they're transparent and consistent and their slabs are nice, at least in my opinion. So knowing all that, I'll get to my point. Just because someone claims a BGS 9.5 is less valuable than a PSA 10, it's not a bad thing. And again, I find some of that silly because it's only a recent thing and grading is subjective and done by humans. And anyone can have bad judgment on any given day for a litany of reasons. And to say so-and-so's gem rating is better than another's is arbitrary. So I say, take advantage of the situation. I'll give you a recent example. I recently purchased a 2011 Bowman Chrome Bryce Harper Refractor Auto numbered to 499 in BGS 95 with a 10 auto and it was True Gem Plus, meaning again it has three 95s and a 10 for $2,700 on February 18th of this year. I actually showcased this card and I just invested $13,000 in MLB stars and prospects. Now, while there are no guarantees that this card will cross, I imagine it will. Now, here's what I mean by take advantage. Just eight days earlier on eBay, the identical card I mentioned sold at auction for $5,200 in PSA 10. That's a $2,500 savings. I have many examples, but I'm gonna leave it there. I say buying BGS 95s is an opportunity these days. There is an imbalance that is man-made and a matter of opinion. It's not factual, and it's very difficult to prove a superior position of, or grading superiority when something is subjective. And that means it can be undone and regress to the way it once was at any time. And if it doesn't, I think $2,500 is a good enough margin to crack and cross. While there are no guarantees that the world of BGS 95s being equal to PSA 10s will, will come about again as it was for the first 20 years of BGS's existence, I am betting it will. It's not to say a BGS slab will rise in value. Maybe a PSA 10 will just be worth less, relatively speaking. Who knows? The outcome I can guarantee, you will pay less for a BGS 9.5 than you will for a PSA 10 these days. And spending less for a car that is backed by transparency is not a bad thing. Because the greater is somewhat accountable for the numeric value assigned to the one of the four criteria when grading and a BGS 9.5 is still a pretty flawless card. Thank you all so much for watching. I so appreciate your time and the many, many comments that come as a result of these episodes. Do keep in mind, however, that anything I say on this channel is strictly my opinion and should be taken as such. Happy hunting, all. Built a